Hey guys, it's Dan Faustell, and thanks for joining me for the final piece of this series. We're going to be talking about the bringing everything together, applying special effects, and finishing out this photo. So this is going to be the Celine shoot with the tunnel and the moon in the background, and I'm going to go through my layer stack in Photoshop and explain to you what my thought process was. Alright, so here's a final image, and there's a few things I might change in the future. Um, some of the some of the tones in the backgrounds here, I got a little dark, so I could go back through. But the beauty about the way that I built this image in Photoshop is I can go back through and modify those things. This is just where I ended up on this particular edit. So if I bring this out of full screen here. Alright, there we go. So let's get this zoomed in and deselect that. Now, this is the final image, and this is how I edited it out. Let me turn off these layers. So I have this stack here, and clean this up a little bit. And I'm just gonna kinda go through and explain what these different layers do, so you can try to understand the thought process of how I came to this final image. So I'm gonna just start turning these off, going down toward the beginning. All right, so the first thing, let's see, uh, I turned everything back on. Let's kill all those. All right, so the first thing, the only reason I brought these particular images in is this is showing just for the break gen, which is what breaks down the image and makes those videos of the, the creation of the process. So in order to have break gen do its thing, I have to have these layers in here to show that initial process of Unreal. So this is going to be the wireframe structure of as I was building out that city. And then I came into the basic lighting, you know, applying lights in where I wanted them. Those four lights there, the torches on the side, and also a few ambient lights here to light up the tunnel. This is the depth pass. So since everything was built in three dimensions in Unreal Engine, I can then render a depth pass and this will be able to be applied as a filter to add your lens blur or other effects. So if I, you want something to affect the background but not the front, say you want to simulate a deep, um, a nice wide aperture, this is how you do it. So when I apply Gaussian bl blur to this and apply this as the layer mask, everything in the back will be affected. But as you get close to the front, it's going to cut out that, that filter. So it will simulate that lens blur much better. So these three layers don't really matter. These are these are just for the break gen at the end, the video of the creation process. So we start off with this. This is the fully rendered background that we wanted to, wanted to use. Then we brought in our model. I showed you in those other videos how I did the balancing layers. So these are those balancing layers. And then I looks like I did another contrast layer early, a little bit later on. Now, I did have a little bit of a problem with this image as I didn't have a raw image. So I was working with JPEG in, in the, you know, ideally I would have had a raw image and I would have been able to bring back a lot of the shadows in here, a lot of the shadows in her outfit. Since it was black, a lot of this was really close to clipping to, to uh, white. Also along the edges here. Some of that was already clipping. So if I had the raw image, I could have brought a little bit more detail into those areas. But that was a little bit of a challenge, and this is why. Always shooting raw, people. So we had those initial um, layers. I did go back into this a little bit later on. Since that was opened up, I was able to play around with those colors a little bit and modify them on the background. So these are all clipped to the background. These are all clipped to the model. So just trying to bring those two pieces together. I did end up adding a little bit of contrast on there. Now these layers here. So all I did was these are some solid color fill layers. So I sampled that color from the moon and the environment. This color I sampled from the torches over there. And I just have some of these different little colors on this one. I was just trying to brighten up the hair. So I what I do is I can bring in these colors and then just paint them on where I want them to be. And currently I have those set to, uh, I didn't, I don't think I ended up using the, the orange because I just felt like it uh, muddied things up since I didn't have the definition in there. So I ended up leaving that orange off, although that should have, 
uh, tied this side of the image into those torches a little bit more. I just decided that this was going to gray and I didn't keep it into the final image. So I just kept that nice blue. The uh, gun barrel corrections, obviously, you know, that's just dropping those yellow tips down and I just used a hue saturation layer. You don't want it to be complete black. You do want some color in there. So I left a little bit of that orangey blue color in there and just a little bit of saturation. The final part here is a little bit of a dodge and burn. So I noticed that her face was not drawing the attention that I wanted it to. So I used that dodge and burn just to knock down some of these little spots here and brighten up the face. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, it gotta be a little bit, oops, sorry, that was the wrong one. I don't know if I, yeah, I can't really show you the, if I did this. So that's at 43%. So that's kind of where I painted on with a white brush and a black brush onto that layer to really bring some areas out and knock some other areas back. And obviously I did a little bit of uh, white on the irises to really make that blue pop a little bit on the nose, a little bit on the uh, lips to make those areas pop. So again, that's on an overlay. And I did end up knocking that down to about 43% in the final image. So if you keep it all the way up, I was probably looking at maybe some of how those colors were starting to get lost. So I brought it down to about there. So that's Dodge and Burn layer. Once I've finished that whole thing and I was happy with the background, how it looked, I went ahead and did a Alt, Control, Shift, and E. So all those layers turned into that. So that's gonna be the exact same layer now and everything is brought together. So from there, I started applying some of my special effects. So back here, background atmosphere. So just a little bit of fog layer that I put just back in this area here, you can see that jumping in. And that's going to be on a screen blending mode, and I put that at about 20%. Same thing, put a little bit of atmosphere here in the front. And again, that's going to be screened at around 20%. Then I brought in some of these flames. So you can see on the torches here, these four torches, I put flame, 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 and flame to bring those in. On a few of these, like this one down here, I did have to mask that flame out because it has to go behind the gun. So if that uh, that's gonna be flame three. So if we just look at flame three and disable the layer mask there, you can see that it was over the gun. So I did have to mask that out and put it back behind. So those were the flame layers. These four layers we talked about before, these are the check layers that I'll use to look at colors in the image. Uh, saturation in the image. So I'll leave those in, but they won't be on for the final image. Now at this point, this is something that I might change in the future because at the very end, I did end up with a very dark image and I'm not sure I'm super happy with that, but I did apply some of these compression layers. So this is a radial gradient and then I have a top and a bottom gradient. And what those do is those just kind of compress the image in. And I think where I've might change is these this top and this bottom. I might leave those out on a re-edit of this just to brighten that up because like I said, I ended up losing a lot of definition in the outside layers. So either bring these up to the very final process or just modify them and go back through the stack. But that is how I originally created was compressing it down. And uh, another thing I could have done is in this one, the top compression, I could have come back in with a brush and I'll bring up my auxiliary camera here. So this is kind of how I have my setup. So this is over here is my monogram console and that's gonna be my brush size. I also have my zoom over here. And then I have, these are what I use for my camera controls as I'm working. So those are the primary controls I use and I have alt and I have space so I can drag the image around. So what I could do, since I did, wasn't real happy about how dark this got and you know I was battling with the brightness of the face, is I could have looked at this and said, okay, I need a black brush. Come in here with a nice soft 
black brush. And if I would have painted that in, that would have brought that face and that hair back up earlier, and then it wouldn't have been as affected by the layers later on. And I may go back through and do that again. Since I have all these layers open still, this is non-destructive editing, and I can always go back through and re-edit things. So at this point, I was looking at the image, and I said, okay, it's a little dark, so I did apply a brightness and contrast to it to just kind of bring those layers up a little bit. This is the film grain layer. So this is built with a smart filter, a Gaussian blur, and some noise. And what that grain does is it's real subtle. But if we zoom in here, we can see that it just adds a little bit of noise. So when pictures are too clean, this will add a little bit of noise to the image and kind of bring that all together so that the model and the background all have a similar texture or pattern to it. So once I got everything, yeah, you know, I was happy, the grain, and it uh, again, about the grain, if you look at movie posters especially, um, get up real close to a movie poster next time you're at the cinema and look at the grain. It's not clean, it's not a beautiful picture. There's grain all over movie posters because it brings the whole image together. You could also use a texture layer instead of the grain and do the same thing, kind of layer that texture on top. So anyway, grain layer, uh, fairly important for these composites. From here, this is a program called Oniric, and it's by Composite Nation, same company that makes my break gen software. So what this is doing is I'm telling it certain areas and it's just applying a glow to those areas, kind of making things pop out. So I have the flame glow, I have a glow for the moon, just to give it a little bit of pop. And then I put a little bit of glow on my model itself, kind of making those edges since those are real bright. I have a lot of atmosphere in there. I want that to show in that atmosphere. And then this one, so at this point I was looking at it, especially when compressed, I, and I was looking at the face and I'm like, okay, it's it's got a little, little chunked up by all the work I did. So I did apply a neural filter, and then also the camera, Adobe Camera Raw is where I did my final color grading. So if I bring that in, let me just turn off the camera raw for a second. So this is what the neural filter did. It just cleaned up that face a little bit for us. And then my final color grading in that camera raw filter. And since I created, oh, may let that process. Since I made this into a, a smart object and the way I created this special effects comp is again, I did that alt control shift E once I had all my Oniric glow in all the glow in there and i was happy with all the special effects i did my control sh alt control shift and e to create that special effects comp layer so again if we zoomed out on that this would be the same as that oh we missed something we missed the smoke gun smoke there they are the two gun smoke layers So if I turned off these special filters, you can see that that's the same thing there. There's something affecting it, but I'm not exactly sure where it is. But anyway, so that, that was start out as a, as a culmination of all these layers below it. So we turned that on and then we used the neural filter to, to uh, clean up the face a little bit. And then I did come into camera raw here. And I did some final color grading to bring it to where we're at. The last two layers here, so I was looking at the eyes. I, I wanted them to pop a little bit more. So I tried doing another O'Neill glow layer on there. But it really didn't have much effect because there wasn't much for O'Neill to grab onto. And then I threw a hue saturation layer in there. I, I was trying to do something, but doesn't look like... This may have been trying to tune it for an export, so maybe I was trying to do a sRGB export and was just trying to clean something up, but it doesn't look like I actually changed anything, that's why that was off. So anyway, that's kind of going through the layer stack and explaining what I did with the different layers. So the first part is bringing the model 
and the background together, getting the colors blended together, the luminosity blended together, and the saturation blended. Then I'll do my special effects. So bring in my smokes, my atmospheres, my flame effects. This is where you do your you know, lightning or other, all your special effects work. From there, I did some uh, layer compression and glows. So the glow type things from Oniric to make those things pop. So those are my glow layers. And then we finally got to the final Adobe Camera Raw and the, I'll go in there and just do a final color grade, play with the, the highlights, the midtones, the shadows, get the picture cleaned up and where I finally want it. And then that's how I get to my final export, which is that one right there. So if you guys want to learn more about how I do these, if you guys want to watch a full process, they are long videos. They, the, this one probably took me two to three hours to put together. And a lot of that's just fiddling with different things, looking through assets, trying to find a fireball I like, trying to uh, see what I want to do with colors, pushing around little zones that, are, that I'm having trouble with. But I, well, I'll be happy to make a video for you guys if you want to see that type of work. But that's the basics of how I do my, my layer stack and bring one of these composites together. So anyway, I'm Dan Fostel, Fostel Studios. Thanks for joining me and hope you guys learned something.